Welcome, dear friend, to Treasures of Wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you are getting, get understanding. I have started a series on faith. And I want you to join me today as we look at how to develop your faith. Paul writing says that grow in grace. Let your faith be strong as you view this program. I invite you to give us a call. We had a call from Kumasi. Someone gave us a need we are praying on. Another call from Tema. We want you to call us wherever you are. The numbers are scrolling. The Lord will be the one who will build your faith because without faith, it's impossible to please him. So now join me at the city of favor as I go into the real teaching of how to develop your faith. God bless you and your family. Let's appreciate the Lord. Put your hands together. Let's appreciate the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 6. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Let me have it in the amplified version. Hebrews 11, verse 6. The amplified version says, Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord and to be satisfactory to him. For whoever would come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that God is a rewarder to those who earnestly and diligently seek him out. Amen. Second scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, starting from verse 5. Ephesians chapter 2, starting from verse 5. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, God made us alive together with Christ. For by grace you have been saved. 6. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Listen. Legally, you are not sitting where you are. Legally, you are sitting in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So you are at a place where you can decree laws are going to be made over there. You may have a brother. He is a member of Parliament. He may be eating with you in the house, sitting with you in the house, but where he sits in this nation, he sits at places where laws are made. So when you get born again, you are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. That's where you are. You are seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. Tell yourself, I am seated with Christ Jesus. In heavenly places. That is where I am. That's where I belong. Another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians. I'm going to give you quite a number of scriptures. Write them down. Read them over and over and over. Because that is faith food. The word of God is faith food. Note that down. The word of God is the food that your faith will eat. The six classes of food. Carbohydrates are for energy. They don't build the body up. So if you want to build the body, you take proteins. Proteins are for building the body. Vitamins are for repair. Vitamins, they repair the damaged parts of the body. Fats and oils, we burn them for more energy. Water to give us balance. Because our body is more than 70% of water. In the same way, the word of God stands for the protein that your faith needs. So as a Christian, if you want to grow, spend more time in the word. Because the word of God is faith food. So I'll be giving you 
a number of scriptures. Go back, read them, meditate on them, look at them, see yourself in them. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21. All things are yours. Therefore, let no one boast in man. Why? For all things are yours. This is enough to make you very happy. He says, all things are are yours. All things are mine. mine. Oh, you may not believe it, but it's true. Say it again. Say it for the last time. You don't work for them. You inherit them. Because the things are for God. And since you are a child of God, all those things now, they are yours. If you are the only child of your parents, Everything they have is yours because you are the bona fide owner. That is what happens. In the same way, when we get born again, the Bible says, therefore, let no one boast in man, for all things are yours. 22. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are. Remember, we are talking of a God who cannot lie. And who does not lie. This notebook by our senses is black. You and I will say it's black. If I ask you what is the color and you say yellow, we all say, oh, this is not yellow. It's black. Now, when God says this is yellow, the moment the word yellow comes out of God's mouth, this thing becomes yellow. So even if they are not yours, and God says all things are yours, what you need to do is believe it. This thing becomes yours. Oh, are you giving the Lord a big hand? That is how faith works. Faith is taking God at his word. I'll give you a testimony. Documented testimony. Since we started teaching on faith, one of our members shared this with me. She said, Bishop, the series of faith has transformed my whole family. Number one, My wife was very sick. When I got home, I gave her all the teachings you gave us. And I prayed for her. The following day, she was healed completely. So you can apply it and it will work for you also. Then two weeks ago, another one says, I now understand. I said, what? So at first, I thought that saying what the Bible says we must say is like I'm lying. Because in case I'm sick and the pain is there and I'm saying I'm healed, it appears as if I'm lying. But now I understand. It's not me who is saying it. The word of God says that I am healed. I'm not saying that I am not sick. I am saying the end from the beginning. So when I start saying I am healed, I continue saying it, then the healing comes. God says, all things are yours. So, as soon as it comes, you receive it, it becomes your portion. Verse 23. 
And you are Christ, and Christ belongs to God. When we become Christians, we don't pray for faith. Write it down. Christians don't pray for faith. It is like human beings asking God to give them a heart, a physical heart. No. You are born with it. The moment you are born as a child, there's a heart pumping. It's pumping. That what shows that you are alive. That's what shows that you are alive. So when you are born again, you get faith the moment you get born again. Everybody must understand that. Your faith is given to you at salvation. Let's get a few scriptures. First one. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 23. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 23. Having been born again, not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible. We are born again, not of a corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. When you are born again, a seed gives birth to you. That seed is the word of God. So whether you got born again in a church, you got born again in a, a meeting, you got born again in a crusade, one thing happened to you. You heard the word of God. And you obeyed the word of God. And from that day, when you die, you are going to heaven. Amen. Amen. We are all going to die. But after we die, there is eternity. And so if you don't give your life to Jesus, why do you spend eternity? Several years ago, when I was young, I was a student. I gave my life to Jesus. I said, Lord, please come into my heart. He took that statement seriously. He came into my life. And ever since that day, my life has never been the same. Amen. I'll give you the chance today to give your life to Jesus. I'll pray for you. And you'll know that by all means, when you die, you are going to heaven. But that is how faith begins. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. All of us again. So then, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. It applies to you. It applies to me. It applies to everybody. When you get born again, the faith you receive is very small. It's like a baby. A baby is exciting. We all enjoy babies. We cuddle our babies. We hold them. We, we rock them. We play with them. Now, when that baby is about eight months, we expect that baby to start doing a few things. Sitting down, crawling. Maybe by one year, she should start walking. By two years, she should be running and giggling and uh, being excited. But should you have a 22-year-old boy and you put him on your shoulder and you bring him to church because you, you love that 22-year-old boy. And then while he's on your shoulder, he vomits. Then you say, oh, no problem. You will put him down. That is how faith works. When we are young Christians, we need other people to support us with their faith. But how long? Today, there are too many baby Christians. You will grow in your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So important. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 14. Romans 10, 14. 
How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. That is the issue. The word of God is preached, but many people have not obeyed it. But if you have heard the word, you are responsible to God. Amen? Amen. Go with me again. Another scripture. John's Gospel. Chapter 14. Verse 12. John's Gospel. Chapter 14. Verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than this will he do because I go to my father. That is for you. You shall do greater works than what Jesus do. You shall do greater works than what Jesus did. I see the power of God breaking forth in your life. I see you being moved by the Holy Spirit to do incredible miracles. Because your faith begins to grow. Amen. Amen. Your faith begins to grow. Your faith begins to grow. I can't hear you. Your faith begins to grow. I just showed you in Ephesians that we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Because of that, we are kings and we are priests. Job 22, verse 28. Job 22, verse 28. You will also decree a thing. And it shall come to pass. You will decree a thing. And it shall come to pass. Let me have the King James Version. Now a decree is issued by people who are in authority. By kings. And those decrees are enforceable by law. So what you are saying is that when you say something in your prayer, God shall establish it by the law of righteousness. So, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. Lift up your right hand. Can you say, I decree my healing. I decree my prosperity. I decree my health. I decree my marriage. Godly marriage. I decree a new job to come upon my life. I decree doors to open for me. Financial doors, spiritual doors, social doors, academic doors, doors of business, doors of increase. I decree wherever I go, I shall be received. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So while I am preaching, faith will be re- coming down, released upon you. You should decree a thing. I was preaching and I said, may you receive your marriages. One person shouted, not only I receive it, she said, I receive mine from America. You shall decree a thing. You see, to somebody else, pastor is just saying something. Another person, pastor is decreeing her future. I decree you shall get eight A's in your WASI exams. I was 
speaking in another school, in Accra here, the principal said, they've never made 10 ones at their BEC. Can you come and pray for us? I took the morning assembly and I spoke. And I said, that yoke is broken from today. Yeah. That year, he called me and said, Daddy, we have received 10 ones. May you break the record. May you get eight A's. You can't sit down and receive that one. You can't sit down and receive that one. Parents, you can get it for your children. Brothers, you can get it for your sisters. Shout amen. So be very alert. Be very alert. So when I, I decreed that there shall be marriages, that lady was in the choir. She said, I received mine from America. Listen to the story. A few months later, a friend of hers called her, meaning a lady friend who was also in the U.S. She said, ah, I just got a call from Ghana. A man came and visited my sister in Ghana. And my sister gave him her album. I was looking through the album and we served him some orange juice and snacks. I was looking through the album. He said, of all the pictures in the album, he just pointed at this picture. So who is this picture? I said, ah, but I gave the album to you. I'm also not married. My sister is also in the picture. He insisted, who is this person? Can you give me the phone number? I officiated the wedding. The man flew down from the USA. The marriage was conducted in Faith Chapel. The man and the woman, they are now in the USA. Happily married. You shall decree a thing. You shall decree a thing. You shall decree a thing. And it shall come to pass. with me into John's gospel chapter 6 verse 63 that's what I'm doing what I'm doing I believe so much in it I believe the power of God is here I believe someone whose womb has been removed can have a bouncing baby boy I believe somebody who has not got eyeballs new eyeballs shall grow inside the person's eye I believe new teeth shall grow in people's mouths. Huh? I believe new limbs shall grow in the legs of other people. I believe anything that was done against your life, God will convert it because no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall come up at you, we shall condemn it in judgment. For this is the heritage of the sons of God, for their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. You shall decree a thing. 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 My ears are popping up. I can hear. I just got a word right now. Somebody is viewing on television. Your, sorry, your ear has just popped open. You can hear clearly. Can I have an amen? I was speaking during our second service and this man had been in the church for quite some time he came to me and said pastor I can hear and I was surprised because we converse with him all the time he says I can hear I said what he said from my infancy I lost one hearing and so I've grown to have a therapy anytime people are talking to me I must quickly turn the good ear so nobody knows that I don't hear. So I came to church today and the sound was so high. I decided to close the good one and the bad one can hear. Yeah. While I was preaching, an ear just popped open. One ear has just popped open. May you receive it in the name of Jesus. An ear just popped open. You shall decree a thing. And it shall come to pass. 
If you decree nothing, you will get nothing. You know, some people come to church because they want to come and hear the word of God. You are past that stage. You are not coming to hear the word of God. You are taking the word of God to affect things in your life. You are taking the word of God to affect things in your spirit. Some people go to the mall every day just to walk around. But you are not going to walk around. You are going to do some good business over there. You are going to do some good business over there. Can you say amen? amen. I didn't just come to church to just walk around. I am coming to change my future. I am changing my situation. I am changing my circumstances. Any sickness in my life shall no more be in my life. From now, the word of God will do me good. Wherever I go, blessings will follow me. I am a child of destiny. I have a mandate on my life. Nobody can cut that mandate short. I have a mandate for my children. I have a mandate for my family. Through me, my whole family shall be blessed. I am a blessing to my nation, Ghana. I receive a new revelation from God. From me, the nation shall be blessed. My family shall be blessed. My friends shall be blessed. Even my enemies shall be blessed. Pray that they should stay very long. Those who were laughing at you when you were starting. Pray that God should give them long life. So that Christmas, God will bless you and go and give them a parcel. Oh my God, am I talking to one person here? Am I talking to one person here? Yes! There are two types of prayer. Old Testament prayer and the New Testament prayer. The Old Testament prayer is kill my enemies, Lord. Put fire on their head, Lord. That's Old Testament prayer. You, you are a New Testament person. It's not the will of God for anybody to go to hell. So if God kills them, they will go to hell. So don't pray that God should kill them. Say, God, my enemies, let me know them. Bless them. Bless them. But bless me more. Bless me more. Lord, raise me more. Let me have more than enough. I don't need one car. I need several cars. I don't need one, one business. I need several businesses. I don't need one bank account. I need several bank accounts. So that I can bless my enemies. I can bless widows. I can bless orphans. I can bless people who have a need. Don't just pray for enough. May God give you more than enough. You are going to be the first in your class. That means if you are 40 in a class, 40 will get 100 over 100. All the 40 are first. We are second to nothing. We are the generation of overcomers. We are created for signs and for wonders. Whatever we couldn't do, it was in the past. Now we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Thank you, dear friend, for viewing Treasures of Wisdom. I am interested in hearing from you. Your calls are important to us. Your emails are important to us. Your Facebook and uh, Twitter Comments are important to us. We have started receiving and we are responding to these demands and these requests from you. Faith is the foundation of your Christian life. If your foundation is big, the building will be big. If the foundation is small, the building is small. So take time to develop your faith. I'm looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you and your family.